My guest today is 13-year-old Anna Du. Anna Du is from Massachusetts in America. She's a, a middle school student, and she's taking on microplastics in our oceans and seas. And she's doing so through her own innovative robot, an ROV, a remotely operated underwater vehicle that can detect and locate microplastics underwater. Anna started off by being worried and concerned about environmental issues and is now playing an active role in their solution and has indeed come up with top award-winning designs for ROVs. Anna, welcome to our studio, welcome to our, uh, to our, uh, our conversation. And uh, please, let's begin with your story. How did it all begin? How did you become interested in the problem of microplastics? Well, it all began when I was walking on the beach one day. I really love going to the beach and finding sea glass, and I think that the sea glass in New England is extremely beautiful and a great way to give gifts to your friends. And one day when I was just picking up sea glass, I noticed that one of them didn't quite feel right. It was a little bit shinier and just didn't feel like a normal piece of sea glass, so I thought that it was a piece of plastic. And then I started looking around and suddenly I was just seeing plastics everywhere. And um, this was really a huge problem and I really wanted to do something about it. So I started just picking up all the pieces of plastics I could find. After when I went home, I just couldn't stop thinking about this problem. And that's really when it all started. So it began with you finding pieces of plastic near where you live, where you go for your walks, and uh, you decided to make a change First of all, by picking up the plastic, and then what did you suddenly realize you could do this more effectively? That there could be a, a more efficient way to, to provide a solution to this problem? Yeah, so in the beginning I was focusing on trying to clean up the pieces of plastics, but then as I was thinking about it, I thought wouldn't it make more sense if I were to first be able to locate where the microplastics are aggregating and then be able to clean it up? Because this way we could target all of our resources and the funding into where you already know where the microplastics are located. I see, so location is key to have a directive useful source uh, or use of resources, right? So we've only got limited numbers of of resources we can devote to cleaning up our seas and oceans. Your innovation, if I correctly understand, will help us locate where to devote our, our resources. Yeah, so um, something that I'm planning to do is I'm looking at what types of environmental factors are, um, are common in the aggregation of microplastics. So right now, I've been looking at things like turbidity, pressure, and temperature, and I'm trying to see if these will have an effect on where microplastics are located. But how did you solve the, the perhaps the most obvious problem of being able to see underwater? As I, as I gather, your robots can go underwater, go to the bottom, and they can see, they can find the plastics. How do they do that? So I have three different detection systems. The first one, which is the main one, is the infrared um, detection system. And so it shines different wavelengths of infrared on these samples, and then it'll look at the differences in absorption and reflection in the microplastics, and then it'll compare the different uh, pictures or micrographs that I took, and that way it'll create a color map that clearly shows the differences between plastics and non-plastics. And after that, I've developed two other supplemental systems that uses artificial intelligence to make it more adaptive. I've created an unnatural color detection system and a morphology classifier. I see. So you've got your, I'm imagining your robot, it goes down to the bottom of a riverbed or by the coast of the sea. It's going across the bottom. It's using infrared light to shine it around its surroundings. And it's looking at the light that comes back. And according to that, it can detect whether it's plastics or a rock or some seaweed. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it's also intelligent in the sense that you can feed back this information with you and you're able to make a picture of all the different factors which are influencing the accumulation of these plastics and then guide your robot there? Or how does that work? 
So um, in order to make it more efficient, my ROV will take the pictures and then put it on something like a USB and then it will take it back so that the, um, something like a computer on the shore can analyze all the data. And it will also be looking at the sensor data once I put the sensor on the ROV and then this way I can be able to um, identify where the microplastics are aggregating. I see. And do you have a, is it, are you limited in the, in the size of these microplastics? What's the smallest uh, amounts you can find with your, your system? It really depends on the camera that I'm using. So um, right now I'm using a normal webcam so it can identify yeah. microplastics that are uh, pretty small if I focus it. But really big enough well. to be visible. Yeah, we'll be able to really see them with our own visible. eyes and they don't go to very tiny, smaller, uh, smaller particle sizes. Yeah. And uh, have you been experimenting with your ROV near where you live or under what conditions have you been at the moment doing using your robot? Right now I've been going to um, beaches near where I live because I live, in, um, I live in Boston so it's really close to a lot of different beaches so I'm able to just go to one and then test things like the waterproofing of my ROV or even how um, my texture systems look, how I can see, identify the microplastics. And Anna, tell me something about why we should be concerned about microplastics in our waterways. Microplastics are a huge problem, and microplastics have already been shown to have a large effect on the environment, and it'll affect a lot of different types of species. But not only can microplastics be devastating to the ecosystem, it's also really detrimental to human health as well. And scientists have been looking at how microplastics will affect the human health, and some things that I found is that microplastics may have a correlation to autism. Indeed. So there's all these related problems associated with microplastics. Your innovation is enabling us to find where they actually are underneath the water. And are you working with people who can then help you or work with you to collect uh, this plastic waste as well? I've been looking at different ways that you can collect the pieces of plastics. I'm still like mainly focusing on trying to do the cleaning up process, uh, I'm trying to do the identification process first before working on cleaning it up. And uh, tell me a bit about when you, when you face a problem, an engineering problem, like you identified the problem that we have these microplastics uh, and that we don't necessarily know where they are accumulating under the, under the water line and you then come up with a solution, an innovation, a robot that can actually locate and find this microplastics. What, tell me a bit about what were the engineering difficulties you had to overcome? What was the, what was the largest thing you know, that was really problematic that you had to solve? Well, one big problem that I had was I didn't have enough data to train the artificial intelligence that I was using in order to make my systems more adaptive because to train a, a very simple, even a very simple um, classification program for AI, you need thousands of data points and it would be extremely difficult for me to collect thousands of photos with my ROV. So what I did was I used a process known as data augmentation, which a lot of um, which a lot of professional AI programs use as well. And using data augmentation, I was able to emulate a lot of micrographs for using to train my AI. Well, that sounds like quite a big project, as it were. So tell me, who was helping you? What, what was your network of people that enabled you to realize your your project goals and aims? A lot of people really supported me along the way. Some of the main people were like my parents. My parents were really supportive and encouraging. And I've also been talking to a lot of experts in this field. Um, so I've been talking to people who are working at Hui and Ambari, and they really specialize in ocean research. And I've also been talking to some people at different uh, spectroscopy companies that are really focused on creating things like FTIRs. Um, and I've been speaking to them them about how plastics would look under infrared light. Fantastic. So they're indeed wanting to use some of the technology you're coming up with to, to in, in their own processes. That's, that's incredible. Well done. And if, if you don't mind me saying, Anna, you're still very young. You're only 13 and you, you came up with this solution when you were 12 indeed. Uh, so that's, an, that's a very inspiring story that at such a, a youthful age you've been able to achieve so much. Tell me a bit about how, how it was at all possible. What were, the, what were the key components? If you're addressing now, if there's other people your age, young people who are looking to make a change, 
What are your tips? What's your advice to them? What should they be doing? Well, one main thing that they should be doing is um, maybe like looking at what are the biggest world problems. And it doesn't matter like how hard it might seem. It doesn't matter what types of difficulties they might encounter. You just have to be really motivated and think about this world problem and think about all sorts of crazy different ideas that just might have the slightest possibility that it'll work. Fantastic. So back to your robots. Um, how do they? Distinguish. You're using infrared light to distinguish between different types of materials. Was that system very difficult to conceive and, and, and to make? Was, was it an engineering barrier just to make it? I, I assume it has to be some sort of... It has to also be able to work in a water environment where you're getting lots of scattering of light. There's all sorts of... I can imagine engineering problems. What, tell me a bit about that. What was the process of the engineering process, the actual putting it together? Did you make it in, your, in a garage? Did you make it in a laboratory? Did you make it using what sort of components and parts? To create um, all my detection systems, I had to go through a lot of different processes. Like I first had to research what might work the best, and that's really how I came up with the infrared detection system because I found that a lot of recycling companies use infrared to identify plastics, and then using that, I was able to get um, different types of infrared LEDs, and um, and then I actually created my own chip by uh, using a copper etched piece of plastic and then etching my own design onto it and that's really how I created my detection system. Fantastic. So Anna, if we're looking towards the future, can we expect many hundreds or even thousands of your robots, your ROVs, to be going around our, our ocean beds and seabeds to, to find and locate uh, where our plastics are accumulating and contributing to our uh, general knowledge of, of where uh, the microplastics are, are, uh, are accumulating. Is that the future? Yeah, so one of the things that, one of the main things that I'm looking at is to be able to create swarms of these ROVs. So once I'm able to identify where the microplastics are aggregating on the ocean floor, then I'm planning on using a swarm of ROVs in order to be able to look at these microplastics and potentially clean them up. I see. So, and how, do we have any idea how it might work? I mean, would there have to be a ship, let's say roughly above it, which could then communicate with the robot and send and receive information so it can, it can generate the, the picture of what's actually down there and, and, and process the data? Or, or how difficult will it be to send and receive information from the robot to us? Well, because uh, um, I would assume that if it would be an ROV, then it'd probably have to communicate with some sort of uh, device like on a boat or even on the shore, depending on how long the tether is. But one of my main goals for this is to really make it more autonomous so that it wouldn't need someone who's there to be able to control it and communicate with that at all times. I plan is to make it completely autonomous so that um, it could just go off on its own and then still be able to identify and clean up these microplastics. Wow. So you're going to really apply lots of AI and make it really quite an intelligent, an yeah. intelligent robot that's able to, to sort of command a communication with us. How about, how do we, how do we power these devices? What's their source of energy? I've been thinking of a lot of different things. So uh, right now I'm just using um, some Paris Plus because it's all uh, tethered and so I just need to have something on shore. But I've been thinking of different ways like using solar power or maybe even um, wind power, different things like that. Fantastic. And uh, I gather as well from reading about you that it's not going to stop with the robots and the problems of microplastics, that you've even got other aspirations and ideas looking forward. Tell me a bit about your plans for the future. Um, I, in the future, something that I hope to, I hope to be able to go to um, MIT, and I also want to be an environmental engineer because I think that the environment is something that everybody really needs to be focused on, and I want to do something. I want to do my part to making this world a better place. And I also really have always loved engineering, so I thought, why not combine these two things? Fantastic. So you're going to be studying more about how our environment works how the climate works, and then you're going to look at engineering possibilities to help, help us in the future to secure a sustainable future for all our children and all our children's children. And uh, 
tell me, are, are, your, are your friends, are you, are you bringing along with you a lot of your friends? Are they being inspired by you to also look into and become interested in science and technology? Yeah, I've been trying to tell a lot of my friends about um, not only like the dangers of, of the problem of microplastics, but also how fun engineering can be. And so I've been trying to uh, teach some people in my school about really like um, how you can use engineering as a way to solve a lot of different problems all around the world. That's fantastic. And have you been, are you communicating with people from different countries as well? Are you an, as an international group, a network of people that you're inspiring? Yeah, I've been trying to uh, reach out to as many people as I can and inspire all of them to be interested in STEM and things like project-based learning because I think that these are really main ways that you can inspire people to be more interested and it's also a great way to learn about science and engineering as well. And regarding your ROV robot, if there's one thing you could wish it, one sort of uh, big leap forward technologically, uh, what would that be? What would you, what would you, what's your main goal now to get it, to augment it still further? So right now I'm really working on the artificial intelligence aspect of my project and I've been running into some issues as to how well the classifications are working because in some areas it's working really well but in others it's still, um, it still needs a little bit of work. And have you got your, you've, you've got a network of people now who are also going to be helping you with that, I, I gather? Yeah, so there are a lot of different people who have really been supportive to me and also been telling me like these random bits of information that turned out to be extremely helpful. Fantastic. So uh, I'm going to wish you all the luck in the world with all your ideas, not just your idea about how to find and locate microplastics in the oceans, but all the other ideas you have with, generally speaking, with engineering, science, technology, and our, our climate, our, our future, our sustainability of the planet. So really best of luck with that. And before we do leave, though, I just wanted to also ask you about that. I gather that you've even got a, a minor planet named after you. So yeah, tell me a bit about that. That was really an amazing experience. So I attend, um, I went to the Broadcom Masters, which is a national competition, and the top 30 students across the USA would get to go there, and all of us got a minor planet named after us, which was gifted by the MIT Lincoln Laboratory, and it was really an amazing experience to be able to get a planet named after me. Well, that's really something. So tell me a bit about this planet. Is it in our solar system? I don't think it's in our solar system, but like, I'm not too sure about the details. It's just really been amazing. Though. And do you think one day we, we might be all able to go and, and visit your planet? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Anna, enjoy Prague, enjoy Innovations Week, and thank you very much for coming over, and all the best with everything you do. And as a little present, just before we do go, I've got just something small for you, just to remind you of our, our interview together. Thank you. Thank you.